G'day trendsetters, stooging around Bend, Oregon today. What will I find? Oh, looky here. This is the new world headquarters for Abbey Bike Tools. All right. Hey, hey. Hi there, I'm Jason with Abbey Bike Tools and we're here with Gravel Cyclists to do a new shop tour. We've moved since the last time that uh, you guys were here, so we'll show you around uh, the new spot. And there's there's a little elbow room, so it's kind of nice. Uh, this is our kind of raw material delivery door uh, where we receive all the bar stock. So we've got giant plates of aluminum for uh, doing the new Turing stand. Uh, we've got uh, some big bar stock, some uh, specialty stainless alloy for a new tool that we're working on. And then along the back wall, we've got kind of inventory of a lot of things that we use for um, basically all of our round products. So everything from bottom bracket sockets, suspension sockets, um, crombie tools, chain whips, all that stuff gets made there. So um, these are our two CNC machines. So uh, a, kind of a, a vintage, if you will, Haas VFOE. Um, it's our three axis mill. And these guys were making, you kind of hear the, the chips hitting the, uh, the cabinet there. And these are the rail ends for our new Turing stand uh, straight off the machine. So you can see kind of no sharp edges, nice clean D-bird parts, uh, kind of up to the quality that we're, we're known for. Um, in here we can, uh, I think we can quite, we'll give it just a second. Let's live dangerously. So that thing's just whittling away at that block of aluminum to uh, to make that part and uh, do a tool change and come back down. This machine's old school and slow, but uh, it still makes great parts. So this is a, a 3 8 drill and that thing will poke, uh, poke holes pretty quickly in there. Uh, actually probably go about twice that fast, so. Um, but yeah, and then this is our uh, dual spindle lathe. I think we had this last time you guys were here, um, kind of in between parts. Um, but we've got the, the main spindle back here. We've got the sub spindle and then the turrets with all the live tools and whatnot that we can spin and cut features. So we'll do everything from like the uh, chain whip tangs to um, crombie tools, all of our bottom bracket and top cap sockets all kind of come out of this machine ready to either go to Anno or go to fabrication. So um, this machine's a bar fed lathe, so it's capable of running through the night kind of largely unattended. Um, and then this is where all the waste material uh, comes out. So this is all uh, 6,000 series aluminum in there. Um, and then before we take it to the recycling, we put it in our uh, chip rinse rack. So we actually dump uh, fresh clean water over these chips and then we get full strength coolant out of the bottom. It's kind of a super low tech way to recover uh, machine tool coolant, keep it out of the groundwater around Central Oregon where we're based. A um, Couple of manual machines that we use mostly for doing prototyping, but we do a little bit of uh, a couple of pr production parts on there that are kind of small and simple and, and don't really lend themselves well to, to CNC. Um, so yeah, the old Victor lathe and then a jet uh, Bridgeport style machine. Um, back here is where we spend uh, the last bit of uh, production time that, that I'm involved with still is, is still do all the welding. Um, and so all these parts on the rack here are crombie ends and, uh, and whatnot that are all prepped and, and ready to go. Um, we'll have handles and then there's weld fixtures for these things and then when we're done we stick them in these racks uh here's one that got rejected that's going back through the the process to get refinished um, but we'll stack all the crombie tools in there so that they are nice to themselves and don't don't beat each other up all right we're riding with jason from abbey tools mate what the hell is this bloody car called this is the prancing moose it's a 1988 volvo 240 sedan uh, with the original red lump uh, engine that makes like all of 90 horsepower. It sounds like there's a hole in the exhaust, mate, but no worries. It's just a tailpipe, there's, there's no muffler.
Next step after welding is passivation. So this does two things. It removes the heat tinge from the, the weld, uh, which is like that, that cool color that you'll see a lot of the times. Um, and then it also removes the free iron from the metal. So the tools are less likely to rust, uh, even though like our crumbie tools and stuff are stained less, it doesn't mean that they're stain proof. So kind of a, um, a distinction there. So in this room, we kind of the, the bit of a pain cave. Uh, we have the vibratory finishing machine, machines or what some people would call uh, tumblers. And so this guy is full of porcelain pellets and it, it literally just shakes the, the living crap out of the tools until they're shiny. Um, kind of a nice, uh, pretty environmentally friendly way to finish these. A lot of the other processes that you would typically see in tool finishing, chrome plate, uh, electroless nickel, um, black oxide are, are kind of some gross processes. So it's, it's kind of nice to be able to uh, do those in this. It also can clean up any any of the last little burrs on that spline that sometimes we get when a cutter tool gets bro uh, dull. So, um, but yeah, the, the tool, most of the stainless tools will spend uh, two to three hours in there until they're done. Um, after they're out of there, typically they will come see the laser engraver. And so this guy is set up to do um, our new T-Way. And so it's got a uh, Ceramark substance on there. And then we actually, this one looks like it's set up and ready to go so we can uh, engrave that guy and uh, away it goes. So that just uh, puts the laser mark on there with pretty much anything that you see from us that, that has a logo on it. This is usually the machine that we do it with. Uh, this tool is still a little new in production and we've, uh, we're still doing these one at a time, whereas normally we do these in bigger fixtures and we'll put dozens of parts in there. So I haven't quite caught up on that guy yet. Um, once tools are engraved, uh, they'll come over here for assembly. So whether that is um, four-way frames, T-ways like we just saw, decades, um, bit-based tools, chain whips, like everything that, that is stored on that shelf gets assembled at this table and there should be tools and instructions and everything that that person needs to do that task here. Uh, the decades being a bigger, more complicated assembly, get their own uh, workstation. And then down here, we've got uh, one specifically for the HAG. We've got this custom chain breaker um, that we built up that uh, is kind of cool. If we give you guys a little, little shot here. So there you go. So yeah, kind of quick, easy, super durable, doesn't... Uh, and we use our own fat, like the same pin for our decade is actually what's driving this here. Um, so we're putting, I don't even know it, like gobs of force through that just in a production environment. It kind of helps us keep tabs on continuous testing and then also makes things a little easy. So, um, and then this is the HAG workstation. Like I mentioned, you'll see some more of these trays that we'll store uh, um, key bolts and whatnot in. This is this shaft is essentially a bearing surface, so it's kind of nice to put them in these trays so that uh, they don't dig each other up. Um, and then these are just like normal baking racks, right? So, um, and then we have Piglet, our old school horizontal machine um, that's actually been in the mountain bike industry, the cycling industry since the birth of mountain biking. Uh, this thing was was originally at the Fairfax uh, High School metal shop. Uh, and was used by some of the pioneers and the founders that, uh, that invented mountain biking that were going to school there. So uh, it's also been owned by Gary Helfrich, who built the very first titanium uh, bike frames in the industry. And then it was at the UBI school in their frame building program for, uh, gosh, probably 10 or 15 years. Uh, when they shut down that program, um, we became its new, uh, new custodian. So it's kind of cool to have this, this super old machine uh, in our shop, still, still doing production stuff uh, for the bike industry. So that's super cool. So, um, behind you, there is kind of where we do, uh, packaging stuff. Um, so this is kind of fit and finish quality control finalists, um, and then, uh, packaging and then all of the finished product gets stored over to your left. So these are custom, custom dub dust cap tools that we do for SRAM, uh, which is why they're red and they also get SRAM logos on them. Uh, we also mark them because they're a right hand thread. So righty Lucy, um, love to do things like that to, to help people out to remember, um, once they're done there, they go on to finish good racks. Um, so this is all the stuff that's, um, 
yeah, all the inventory that's ready to ship, and then it all heads out that door. So there you have it, folks. Wrapping up the factory tour here today, Abbey Tools in Bend, Oregon. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for fascinating content such as this. No bull gravel bike reviews, other product reviews, ride experience videos, and my favorite, General Madness. You are onto the couch. That's how you ask. That is extremely impolite. Really? That's right. I'll see you in the next video.